Today is Monday, July 22nd, 2019. This is the regular City Council meeting for the City of St. Peter. It is 7 o'clock p.m. Call the meeting to order. Would all please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone should have a copy of the agenda. Are there any changes or corrections to the agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. All in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next, we have the minutes from our July 8th, 2019 meeting. Those minutes appear on pages four through six. Are there any changes in, or corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? Make motion to approve. Second. All in favor of the written uh, minutes as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. Next, we'll address visitors. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any agenda item? Paul, we'll keep you reserved for the later. Uh, is there anyone, anyone else? Sorry. Is there anyone that would like to speak to the council on any matter whatsoever? Seeing no one, we will move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda begins in detail on page 7 and concludes with the resolution on page 26 and includes the following budgeted purchases in excess of $10,000 to Burger Interiors for replacement carpeting at, community, at the community center for $11,088. The following license applications are hereby requested for a Sunday on sale liquor to the American Legion for 229 Nassau for uh, July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020. An on sale liquor for the American Legion for the same dates, July 1st to, to uh, June 30th, 2020. A temporary on sale liquor license to the St. Peter Rotary for Minnesota Square for September 7th and 8th, 2019. To Nickel County Ag Society for 400 Union for August 8th, or excuse me, August 7th through August 10th, to the St. Peter Chamber of Commerce for 101 South Front Street, Levy Park, uh, for August 20th, 2019. The following employee appointments. Jason Lee for electric superintendent for $94,700 a year, to Tim Mayo for groundskeeper at $22.16 per hour, and plus the following disbursement uh, a schedule of disbursements for July 4th, 2019 through July 17th, 2019. Are there any questions, comments on the consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to, to approve? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Second. Now any questions or comments? Call the roll, please, Barb. Council Member Grams. Aye. Council Member Harris. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Member Carlin. Aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved. Next, we have unfinished business, which there is none. We will move to new business. And the first is the 2019 North 3rd Street Sidewalk Improvement Project. Mr. Moulton. Uh, Mayor Zeman and City Council, uh, we're here tonight to ask you to approve the, uh, the project as complete and authorize final payment uh, to Nielsen uh, Black Topping and Concrete. Uh, as you guys are aware, we were for, before you this spring and talking about curb and gutter and continuing our street maintenance program. And uh, that's exactly what we did. The project went very well as far as the timing. Uh, we tried to improve on how things went from last year. Uh, a little better coordination and a great effort on city staff and working with Nielsen to make that happen. Um, one thing we did add to this project that you will see here uh, that wasn't in the original scope, and that is the Best Western project. Uh, we did work with the developer there. He uh, run into some issues with uh, trying to get things done in a timely manner, and he ended up adding 34574 to our project with Nielsen, who accepted that project or was willing to accept that portion of the project. Uh, those costs show up on the back page as being assessed to the property. Uh, a waiver was signed by the uh, developer there to make that happen. He hasn't decided whether or not he's going to pay up front or assess that, but we did make that option available to him. Um, otherwise, the project was real close to uh, 
the original goals as we had set forward. Uh, there were several different phases of this project. Uh, we kind of had about five different things going on there. Uh, we did work on Chatham Street to Scarrow Street on North 3rd. That was the majority of the work. That was about 136137 Old Minnesota Avenue, uh, adjacent to um, the east side there by the old Holiday Store Speedway. We added that project um, to his project as well. Or, I'm sorry, that was in the original scope. Uh, he did, that's why he was uh, willing to work with the Best Western Group because they were really adjacent to that project to make things happen. Uh, the Best Memorial, we added a ramp in that area. And then on North 5th Street, part of our sidewalk project, uh, working to uh, add sidewalk and get some driveways and curb cuts put in there. Final project was on Scarrow Street as well. Uh, worked with homeowners, uh, streets had a little bit of intersection work there, then we had dedicated sidewalk that we were trying to implement. We did finish um, section eight of our, our uh, project up there, and so we we're happy with how that came out and things were on schedule. Uh, on pages 31 and 32 is a resolution uh, for your approval, and I'm willing to ask, answer any questions that you may ask. Questions for Pete. Steve. I don't have a question. I just want to compliment you um, on that whole project over there. I went through there yesterday, last week from the hospital on my way to see a chiropractor, and I whip, zipped right through there, and the chiropractor said, Boy, Steve, your motor is hot on my chair. Mr. Mayor, he wasn't talking about me being hot, but he was talking <laughs> about the motor on my chair. But it, that was really a great project. Yeah. I'm glad it's great for someone with a mobility issue. It really is. Good. Pete, um, unless someone else has something, I have a question. Um, I'll wait for you, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, some of the other uh, charges on here, uh, before the, you get to the total of 243000 are any of those going to be assessed? Uh, we have a total of assessments just under $82,000 that we worked with homeowners on. Okay. Uh, we had a variety of different areas that we pulled from, funds from. Uh, stormwater budget was about $40,200. Uh, the dedicated sidewalk fund, you gave us 50000 to make that work. And in the streets budget, we had allocated early on in the streets budget for a lot of the radiuses and different intersection and ADA compliance issues where we pulled money from. And then finally, the parks budget paid a little bit of money down there for the Betts Memorial. Okay. Roger. That answered it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Questions? <coughs> Comments? Not the resolution accepting the North 3rd Street and miscellaneous sidewalk improvement project as complete and authorizing final payment to the contractor Nielsen Blacktopping and Concrete, Inc. appears on pages 31 and 32. Is there a motion for approval? Make a motion to approve. Second. Any other questions or comments? Paul Rowe, please. Councilmember Garrison. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Cohen. Aye. Mayor Zeman. Aye. Councilmember Honey. Aye. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Aye. Councilmember Graham. Aye. Resolution is approved. Next Thank up. You. Thanks, sir. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Um, next up, we have a Sunday liquor license application. And, Chief, are you going to tell us who and why? Sure, the Nicollet uh, Cafe has applied for, you might want to be has, uh, applied for a Sunday liquor license. Um, they've gone through the normal process of backgrounds, and uh, as you see in the, the memo, that process has gone through. Can I answer any questions, um, concerns anyone has? Is we don't have any concerns okay. from the police department standpoint. Isn't there another one, too, though, that's on the same resolution? Yes. Um, Extra innings. Which is a new business, uh, the location of, oh, what was the last? Business to be in there. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Right. Yeah, it was Willie's so. before that. So that is a new um, application and license. Okay. All right. And we're seeing these because they're new. There aren't renewals. Otherwise, Correct. they'd be on the consent agenda. Right? Correct. Okay. Any questions about these? Okay, the backgrounds have been done. If not, the resolution approving the new business applications for the. Uh, Sunday liquor on sale, 3 2 wine and soft drink appears on page 34. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any questions, comments? Hold the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Carlin? Aye. Mayor Zeman? Aye. Councilmember Honey? Aye. Councilmember Pfeiffer? Aye. Councilmember Graham? Aye. Councilmember Pierce? Aye. 
Resolution is approved. That, uh, let's see, next we have an executive, executive session for a land transaction, so we're going to ask for a uh, closed session um, in order to discuss uh, offers and counter offers on the purchase of, the, of a uh, property. So what we will need is a motion to approve that, and then we will ask everyone to clear out, and Bart will guard the doors, and then we will uh, be back. I don't think the discussion will be very long, so then we'll come back into regular session. So the resolution calling for the closed session appears on page 35 for the consideration of offers and counter offers for the purchase of sale or real property. Um, is there a motion to approve? Move the resolution, Mr. Mayor. Second. Second. Any question or any questions, comments? Call the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember Curling? Aye. Mayor Zinn? Aye. Councilmember Pony? Aye. Councilmember Pfeiffer? Aye. Councilmember Grams? Aye. Councilmember Barris? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Resolution is approved. We will recess into closed session. Uh, I will contact you when we're done. And uh, like I say, it shouldn't, shouldn't take too long. Session. Um, it is now 7:16 p.m. Oops. And the next thing that we have up on the oh. uh, agenda is for a land transaction. And um, Jim, if you just want to go through basically what we kind of what we just talked about, and uh, we can go from there. Yeah, be glad to. <coughs> um, Paul Davis had approached the city some time ago. The city sold uh, the property that's commonly referred to as the Culligan property at Paul. At that time, the city reserved the right of first refusal. Uh, Mr. Davis has approached the city and asked the city to release that right of first refusal. There were some discussions uh, in that uh, Mr. Davis has offered to pay the city a sum of $5,500 for that release. I would, I think that's a fair amount. I think the goal at the time was to preserve a possibility of a highway going that track. Doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. I would recommend the council accept Mr. Davis's agreement to buy the right of first refusal for some of $5,500. Okay. Can't open any questions. Questions? Yes. John? So, this says 5,000. The resolution so, says 5,500. Back page. Back page. The agreement says 2,500. That was the initial. Yeah. yeah. Back page. Of the, flip it all over. The resolution says 5,500. And the resolution says 5,500. What's what's the first so thing that's been signed? That was that a, no, I think that was an initial offer. Oh, 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 okay. So we had two offers here. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Say if you go that was their original. Go to page uh, 35F. Um, Paul, did you have anything really to add? Okay. Um, unless you have questions. All right. Does anybody else have any questions for uh, Jim? Or anybody? If not, the resolution authorizing the execution of release of agreement to terminate right of first refusal document for the land located at 203 South Front Street appears on page 35F of the handout we just received. Is there a motion for approval? Move the resolution, Mr. Mayor. Second. Now any questions, comments? Call the roll, please, Bart. Mayor Zeman. Aye. Councilmember Kwame. Aye. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Aye. Councilmember Graham. Aye. Councilmember Harris. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Carlin. Aye. Resolution is approved. Thanks for coming in, Paul. <coughs> Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. That concludes our new business. Next up, we have reports. Um, I'm going to uh, give my time to Council Member uh, Carlin when uh, she comes up to speak here uh, in a little bit. So I don't have anything to, to put in. Chief, do you have uh, something for us? The only thing that I have is to call people's attention to uh, a video on our Facebook page. Okay. It was produced by the Minnesota Chiefs of Police Association. Um, you can go to either the Police Department Facebook page, you can go to YouTube, 
wear the badge, and um, these videos are produced in a recruit, really a recruiting effort, but in the video that was produced of, uh, in, here in St. Peter, which was very well done if you haven't seen it, um, it really highlights the work that Detective Groco has done. Yep. And so it was different for the association, and uh, they were here for quite a while. They are also going to follow it up with a second video, which will be the first time they've done that, which will highlight his work with drug court. Yeah. So we're looking forward to having that one released, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. All right. Um, the next thing, um, we had a city county meeting here last week, was it? Last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. and. Uh, if uh, John or Steve or both of you would like to comment, it would be great. Oh, I'll back step to you, Mr. Back step Walker, right. yeah. uh, We meet with the county, the county administrator, and two um, elected officials from the county three or four times a year. The um, topics don't change rapidly. We are addressing some of the same ones, uh, making bits of progress on them. We talk about the gravel road west of the new high school, which is going to have to eventually join on to the um, paved road, County 51 at the north end, and we are applying for grant money for that, and we'll need the county's assistance, so we keep that on the front, we'll be talking about that. We talk about water coming off the bluffs, off the agricultural land to the west, down into the new high school, and into <coughs> all the way over as far as um, um, Traverse Green now. Um, we are working with the Soil and Water Conservation District in applying for a grant for uh, due in September for money for a project to see if we can do something about pulling the water back and letting it out more slowly. We applied for this last September. We were not successful. We are hopefully hopeful that we can um, get the money this year. Uh, we have updates on transit all the time. So there's always something going on. Uh, Councilmember Graham knows much more about that than I do. Um, library funding. St. Peter and North Mankato always feel that the uh, county could do a little more with their library funding, and so that will be coming up again this summer. Um, both the city administrator from Man North Mankato and St. Peter will be appearing before the county making our, our presenting our case. And then in city development and how that affects um, the county and the county tax base and those sorts of things. So very low-key meeting, lasted an hour and a half. Okay. Was, was there more? Talked about composting a little bit. Um, some of the issues that some of the other communities are dealing with. Other than that, that pretty much summarizes <coughs> everything, John. Thank you. Right. Thanks to both of you. Anybody have questions for the two of them? <clears throat> if not, the next thing we have under uh, reports are the dog park location, and I think Russ and Pete are going to... Russ is going to help us out. Yeah, Mayor, uh, <laughs> members of the City Council, um, <laughs> Chapter 462.357, a state statute, is what authorizes you to have a zoning ordinance. It prescribes the administration of zoning ordinances, allows you to separate the, the town into various districts, which you have done with residential, commercial, and ind industrial districts. It allows you to regulate the uses that are allowed in those districts. It allows you to regulate the development as to height, lot coverage, setbacks, parking, etc. So in each of the zoning districts, you have two classifications of land uses. You have permitted uses, um, which if you want to develop a permitted use, you come down and get a building permit. I sign off on the zoning that it meets the setbacks height and it's an allowable use, and you can go ahead with your construction. There's no planning commission review. There's no board of zoning appeals or city council review of those permitted uses of land. The other classification would, would be what they call conditional uses of land. And these are uses in the various districts that perhaps have a potential to cause a conflict with an adjoining or neighboring land use. A, a, a typical example would be a, a, uh, um, a school in a residential district. It's not uncommon to build schools, um, north elementary, south elementary, to be in or in close proximity to a neighborhood. So typically a school would be listed as a conditional use because you wouldn't want that school to be uh, developed under the same standards as you would the city, uh, single family home. For instance, perhaps it's more appropriate for a larger than a seven-foot side yard setback from the other uses. Um, and on a conditional use, there can be three outcomes. The permit is denied, and that would you'd have to determine that there are no conditions that we can place upon this land use to mitigate or alleviate those, those 
those real conflicts with the other land uses. You could provide an unconditional conditional use permit, which means that they can just go ahead essentially as a permitted use, um, or you can place conditions on them. You can require additional setbacks. You can uh, require that parking lots be screened. You can require uh, certain vegetation and landscaping standards. Um, and so if, if you're not on one of those two lists, you are prohibited from, from establishing that use in that zoning district. The, uh, the statute reads, uh, the Board of e Appeals and Adjustments or the governing body, you folks, as the case may be, may not permit a variance, as a variance, any use that is not allowed under the zoning ordinance for property in the zone where the affected prop person's land is located. This applies to the dog park because the preferred or the noted location of the committee, and I believe the parks board, is within an industrially zoned um, uh, property. Um, we have two industrial zones. One's essentially the North Industrial Park or the River's Edge Hospital campus and surrounding areas. Um, that's our lighter industrial. And then we have a heavier industrial that includes Giraffe, Geoboy, Alumacraft, um, and, and the, the businesses up and down uh, uh, Galt Street and on many of the businesses along 3rd Street in that area. That's our heavier, heavier industrial area. In your ordinance, parks are prohibited in the industrial districts because they're not on either the list of a permitted use or a conditional use of land. So as such, you don't have the authority to establish a dog park right now at the corner of Swift and St. Julian Street. Knowing that this was coming forward, I approached the Planning Commission at their last meeting, and the Planning Commission has recommended that we amend the text of the zoning ordinance to allow for the development of park and recreation services within both the I-1 and I-2 districts as a permitted use of land. So there would be no requirement to have Board of Zoning Appeals action. There would be no requirement to hold a public hearing and notify the neighbors. Um, they are willing to do that because the definition of park and rec surface services says a city-owned and operated parks, playgrounds, recreation areas, and open spaces. And there's all the trust in the world that the city council and the parks board is locating a park or dog park would take into consideration all of the requirements of the neighborhood in the general vicinity. So that's where we're at now. Uh, city Administrator Prafke had perhaps uh, entertained that you would take action on this tonight, but the suggestion that I, I think he is joining me is that you kind of sit tight for a little bit as the Planning Commission at the next meet considers the amendment, and then at some point you will be required to hold a public hearing, which I'm anticipating to be within 60 days. So that's kind of the status of the dog park right now, and I'd answer any questions regarding zoning that you may have. Questions? Steve? So are you saying, Russ, that this particular change would only be applicable to uh, areas that are zoned uh, um, industrial that's city owned only? No, anyone that would own industrial property, but the, the park and rec facility needs to be city owned. Okay. Not necessarily the, plant, the land. I suppose you could lease property and, and establish the use. Um, but right now it's not allowed in the industrial at all. It's, it's allowed in the residential districts, of course, and, and I believe it's even allowed in the commercial districts. Uh, and this is different than a playground at an apartment complex that is, is accessory to the residential use. Um, I had another example on the way driving in tonight, and I can't remember what the other one was. But, but there are, oh, the, a playground at a school would be accessory to the educational institution and wouldn't be park and rec services. Also, those instances, neither one are city owned. Okay. So. Thanks, Russ. Any other questions? <clears throat> so there would be a few channels down the road here yet before we make the final decision. All right. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. Next up, we have, uh, if anyone else has anything to add, and I'm going to, well, I'm going to ask that first before I turn it over to uh, Council Member Parlin. Does anybody else have anything they would like to share or, or uh, discuss? If not, Councilor Car uh, Carlin, would you uh, share something with us? Thank you, Mayor Zeman. I have a prepared letter. Uh, I'm going to make sure that Barbara gets a copy of this, but I'd like to read it aloud to everyone. Dear Mayor Zeman and members of the St. Peter City Council, it is with deep sadness that I must resign from my position as a St. Peter City Council member, effective Friday, July 26, 2019. My family has made the decision to move out of the area. My last weeks in St. Peter will be spent preparing for our departure. <clears throat> It has been an honor and a pleasure to represent the citizens of St. Peter over the past decade. 
I have great admiration for the current and previous council members, the city staff, and the many citizens who serve on the city's boards and commissions. All are committed to improving this community by lifting up their neighbors and working together to solve our most pressing issues. I consider myself very fortunate to have been a St. Peterite for these past several years. To my fellow council members, thank you for your collegiality. I wish you great success in the future. Thank you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Anyone have uh, questions for Susie? I, we didn't get you a clock, so I told John earlier if you want that one up there, you, know, you, can, take, you can take that. But I, I think you're going to be here for a little bit yet, right? I will still be in town a little bit longer, um, and I might stop by and visit everybody. I've already warned Todd that once I'm a, uh, a regular civilian citizen, I'll be sure to uh, stop by and, and uh, keep tabs on everything the council is doing. So, so would it be appropriate at a future council meeting while she's still in town to present her with the clock so she has yes. something more to sell on St. Peter or I, eBay? I, that's what I was alluding to, that yes. if, uh, if she was still going to be in town for a while, yes. I'm sure we could... We can work something out. Mm -hmm. have, a, have a little ceremony. Thank you. I would be happy to attend. I uh, might actually uh, turn to our city attorney um, and uh, um, maybe talk for just a moment about what the vacancy uh, indicates or how that vacancy will be filled. Is that something that you can? Because, thank you. Because the resignation is prior to the opening of the next uh, city council uh, candidacy, I think it's uh, July 31, 30. About 30. This uh, position will now be uh, completed on a special election, which can be held the same time as a general election. So it'll be another, you know, it'll be a, a special election. The her office will be open from the vacancy until a new person is elected. The new person can be sworn in upon certification that they they won. So that could be the last week in November. So up until that time, the seat will be vacant. Council has an option to to appoint like it did before, or just leave it vacant. I think that would be a good thing for. The council to take an opportunity to discuss at its next school session session to determine how you want to deal with Ms. Carlin's uh, vacancy. Okay. I have a couple of things. Uh, Susie, uh, can you share with us where your family is going and what you're going to be doing? Absolutely. Uh, those who've uh, followed my family over the years know that we have um, a special connection with Southeast Asia and have uh, uh, spent some time in China and Malaysia. Um, my husband has accepted a new job in Thailand, and so our family will be relocating there for a two-year period. My children will be enrolling in an international school, and uh, I will be looking for ways to keep myself busy when we first arrive. Um, but I'm sure that it won't take long before I find something. So, where were the other when you? Where were the other locations you guys have been to? Uh, China and also in Malaysia. My Malaysia. daughter was born in Malaysia in 2016. Yes. China, I couldn't remember. What it was. <laughs> um, for those watching now, Jim, um, for people that want to um, apply for the position. You can apply you know, because there's another position mm -hmm. open too, a four-year term and the rest of Susie's term. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't apply for both, can you not? You can just or, no. Or, you just apply for one. Right. Each, apply for the last two years of Susie's term or right. the full four-year term. Right. Okay. You're talking about filing during yes. the filing. Uh, filing. Sorry. Filing. Yeah, filing. Yes. That's what I meant. To say. Wrong word. Me too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And just as a reminder, your goal session is coming up so you can discuss this I'm sure more in depth on uh, July 29th at 3 p.m. in the governor's room that is right anyone else questions or comments or <coughs> well wishes like I say we will see you again absolutely you thank you and um, you know, we will uh, be able to share a little bit more of that so but thank you for your service and uh, I know your constituents will miss you, as we will too. All right. With that being said, which is a line.
sign I don't like to use, but uh, is uh, anyone else now have anything they would like to add? Not. Is there a motion to adjourn, Susie? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Is there a second, Susie? Second. <laughs> All in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.